Topic 3.5 focuses on genetic modification in biotechnology. The use of biotechnology in many areas of science is a field that is ever-changing, but there are a few applications of this technology that are now commonly used for more than just research. To start, let's talk about PCR and gel electrophoresis. If you recall, PCR is a technique used in a lab to replicate small samples of DNA in a short period of time. Each reaction cycle doubles the amount of DNA, and 30 cycles can make up to 1 billion copies. In PCR reactions, all of the components for DNA replication are added to test tubes and put into thermal cyclers. This includes the small DNA sample, DNA primers, free nucleotides, TAC polymerase, and a reaction buffer. With all of the materials in place, the thermal cycler begins to carry out PCR. First, the samples are quickly heated up, which causes the original DNA molecules to separate into two strands. Second, the sample is cooled down, which allows the DNA primers to anneal to the gene of interest on the original DNA strands. Once bound, the temperature is slightly increased, which allows for free nucleotides to be added to the original open strands via TAC DNA polymerase. This should look very similar to the process of DNA replication you learned about in 2.7. Once the first cycle is complete, the samples are heated up again, and the same process occurs over and over, resulting in billions of copies of an original DNA strand. So what do we do with all of these strands? That's where gel electrophoresis comes into play. Gel electrophoresis is a technique used to separate proteins or fragments of DNA according to size. Samples are placed in a block of gel, and an electric current is applied, which causes the samples to move through the gel. Let's remember that the phosphate group in DNA's backbone causes it to be negatively charged overall. This negative charge is therefore attracted to the positive electrode, which pulls it through the gel. Smaller proteins or DNA strands will move fast with less resistance and so move farther through the gel. Larger molecules, on the other hand, move slower and travel less distance. This results in samples of different sizes to travel at different speeds and end up at different distances, creating bands in the gel. As you can see from this picture, sample 1 is made up of longer strands of DNA because the band did not travel far from the well it was placed in, whereas sample 2 is made up of short strands of DNA since it traveled much farther from the well in the same amount of time. Scientists often use a ladder with known DNA length to compare new samples, as seen in the first column of this image. Putting these two biotechnology concepts together, scientists can use PCR, and gel electrophoresis to carry out different applications in DNA profiling. DNA profiling compares DNA from multiple sources with the end goal of identifying a person. In this process, DNA samples are collected, amplified with PCR, and then run on a gel to determine the types of DNA fragments present. People who are more related with each other will share a similar DNA profile noted by multiple matching bands within an electrophoresis gel. Taking a look at this picture, pause the video and determine which children are related to the parents. This DNA profile shows that child 1 and 3 are both children of mom and dad, while child 2 is a child of only mom. And sorry number 4, you're not related. Advances in biotechnology have also given us the ability to change organisms through genetic modification. Genetic modification is the process of changing an organism's genome by transferring genes from one species to another. Because the genetic code is universal, an organism can express a new trait if the appropriate gene is introduced into its genome. The process of gene transfer can be summarized in four key steps. One, gene isolation. 2. Digestion, 3. Insertion, and 4. Expression. Let's take a closer look at this image that shows an insulin gene being genetically modified into a bacteria cell's genome. First, a gene and vector are isolated, and in this case, we are referring to the insulin gene as the gene of interest and the plasmid of a bacteria cell as the vector. Once isolated, both the vector and the gene are cut or digested using restriction enzymes at specific sites. These sites are complementary and match perfectly, which allows the gene to be inserted into the vector. This takes us to the final step, where the newly formed vector carrying the gene of interest 
is introduced to the host cell. If all goes well, the host cell will express the desired trait. In this example, if the transformation is successful, the bacteria cell will produce insulin that scientists can extract and use to treat insulin deficits. The process of genetic modification is also seen heavily in the agricultural industry in which crops are being introduced to traits from other organisms. Like all advancements in technology, we need to understand and consider the inevitable risks and factors. A few benefits of GM crops include pest-resistant crops, improved nutritional value, and resistance to high temperatures. A few risks include reduction of biodiversity where GM crops are grown, mutation of transferred genes causing unexpected health problems, and cross-pollination could lead to unintended resistance in weeds. The use of GM crops is still being debated by many groups. Make sure you have some knowledge of both sides of the argument for the IB exam. Next, let's talk about cloning. Imagine if there were two of me. How cool would that be? Clones are groups of genetically identical organisms derived from a single original parent cell. Many species have natural methods of cloning themselves to produce identical offspring. Planaria, for example, are animals that form clones through processes such as binary fission and fragmentation. These processes, along with budding, allow some animals to break into pieces that form a new, complete, identical organism, an exact clone. Plants create natural clones a bit differently. Some plants have the ability to grow long stems with plantlets at the ends. These are referred to as runners. Parts of the runner take root and develop into an identical clone of the original plant. Humans also possess a natural method of cloning as seen in monozygotic twins, better known as identical twins. During this process, a fertilized egg splits into two zygotes, which continue to develop separately. Because the split occurred after fertilization, the two embryos possess the same DNA, technically making them clones of each other. While I've missed my chance of having a twin from birth, Maybe there's still a chance to clone myself like they did with Dolly the sheep. Once animals are adults, it is more difficult to clone them because their cells are differentiated. However, John Gurdon developed the method called somatic cell nuclear transfer. In SCNT, the cells harvested and grown from a donor are placed next to an egg of a donor whose nucleus was removed. The nucleus is then transferred into the donor egg and then implanted into a surrogate to complete its development. This successfully transfers the original DNA into a new developing cell, creating an exact clone. Another artificial method of cloning is called embryonic division. This involves artificially splitting a developed embryo into multiple parts and implanting them into surrogates, which will take them to term, again making identical clones of the original embryo. 